Perfectly Good Man, my latest novel, is about a priest and his family in a remote parish in the far west of Cornwall. And I conceived it as a companion novel to Notes from an Exhibition. And in that book, the, the central idea was um, the difficulty of growing up with a mother who was a mad genius. And in this case, the madness is on the father's side, and the madness consists of not just being a priest, but of devoting your whole life to being as good as he possibly can. And inevitably, that flows over onto the wife and the children of, of, of such a man. And it's a kind of moral thriller as well. So at the very beginning, um, Barnaby, the, the priest, is put into this terrible situation because he is called to the house of a young man who is in a wheelchair and suddenly realises said young man is committing suicide there and then. And what can he do? He'll be dead in five minutes. There's no time to call an ambulance. And so he prays for his soul. He gives him last unction and prays for his soul. And this leads to him having, in public at the inquest, having to, to justify that and the power of prayer which I think is a, a terribly brave thing to do because these days most people think of priests as just um, social workers, really. And uh, he, he stands up for what, it, what it's really about. Um, but on another level, it's a thriller too because he has a rather frightening stalker, about which more later. <laughs> question implicit in the title, which is what makes a perfectly good man become a priest. Um, in fact, one of the, one of the characters the, who becomes Barnaby's wife, when she first meets him, that's the question at the front of her mind, is you, what, basically what a waste. Um, and I wanted to, on one level, have the book spiralling backwards into the roots of Barnaby's life, into his troubled teens and childhood, to find out what, what the answer might be. Um, so the book moves in two directions at once, just as Notes from an Exhibition did. So we have Barnaby's life told in reverse, going right back to boyhood. And meanwhile, we have his family's stories going forward in ordinary time. That makes it sound very confusing. I, I hope it isn't. Um, but I did conceive it in a way that uh, each, I wanted each chapter to feel like a self-contained short story as well. I'm a great believer in books that you can keep by the bed and allow yourself one chapter at bedtime. on the face of it about religion, but I, I, can, I can assure readers who uh, never ever set foot in a church that it's about much more than that. It's, it's really about family, um, as most of my books are, and about the dynamics of the family. And on one level, Barnaby's faith is, is a, a device. It's, it's, a, it's almost like a metaphor for any kind of vision. It could equally well, he could equally well have been an artist. Um, I just chose to make him a priest, but I, I hope it won't put people off. <laughs>